So I've got three shrimp. How many results are we going? Just one. Oh, I don't expect that from you. It's our first. Sometimes in the heat of the moment, contestants end up breaking the rules. Just like this contestant who was fed up with doing a really dirty job. In episode 3 of season 16, after a brutal loss in the ostrich meat challenge, the blue team was punished with handling raw pine nuts as well as dealing with the goo and eggshells in the dining room. Name a more delicious duo. But Matt decided he was too good to do such a dirty job. He whined and complained about the judges just not understanding his culinary brilliance. I'm a force to be reckoned with inside of a kitchen. I don't want to sit here and listen to these guys degrading me and talking Sadly, it fell on deaf ears. And honestly, with an attitude like that, no freaking wonder. While the punishment was in full swing, Matt's went MIA. He was chilling back at the dorms while the others worked their butts off. When Aaron called him out on it, Matt practically exploded with rage. And instead of, you know, taking the note and moving on, he decided to pack his bags and quit the competition. I don't give a I don't give a when nobody says. But Ramsey wasn't gonna let him off the hook so easily. He called him over for a quick chat to try and get to the bottom of it. You see, Matt argued that the competition was unfair. But Ramsey wasted no time in putting him in his place. He made it crystal clear that the judges' decisions were final. And if Matt didn't want to play by the rules, he was free to leave. If you feel that you can't compete and you feel that you aren't good enough to win this, I'm not going to force you to stay, buddy. And that's when Matt was suddenly hit by a truck full of wisdom. He had a change of heart and decided he didn't want to quit after all. So what was the drama about? I mean, the guy clearly had no respect for the competition, so why even bother keeping him around anyway? He only made it to episode 10 after all, so I'm of the mind that Ramsey should have cut his losses and let him go here. But that little temper tantrum was nothing in comparison to what happened with Scott when he was handling the fish station in the second episode of season 18. First off, he misheard the orders and sent up only enough shrimp for one dish instead of two. And all hell broke loose not long after. Where are the other shrimp? Well, I, I'm confused, Chef. What do you You're need confused. That? I need the shrimp for the risotto. Scott, bless his confused heart, just couldn't keep up. Ramsey was practically breathing fire down his neck, demanding the shrimp for another plate. But Scott, in his infinite wisdom, decided to send out six shrimp when he only needed three, leaving everyone, including sous chef Christina of all people, really annoyed. Six shrimp. Oh my God, you only need oh three now. God. You already cooked three. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, Ramsey caught him doing this. Hey, Donut, why are you cooking the shrimp? He'd already done the order. It's gone. Oh boy. He cooked extra shrimp for tableside service, which wasn't even his job. But wait, the craziest part was yet to come. Tableside means it's sat next to the table. Yes, chef. This is so embarrassing. Ramsey had to hold his hand and bring him out to show what tableside meant. If this fiasco of a service wasn't a big enough hint, the rookies lost, and Scott found himself in the hot seat as the first nominee for elimination. Ramsey asked Scott if he was really at his best. Scott tried to defend himself, but Ramsey hit back even harder at every turn. In the end, Scott got the boots. Surprise, surprise. My ego right now is totally bruised. I'm the only one out of this whole group that owns their own restaurant. Ramsey's parting words were, well, classic Ramsey. The good news is you can open your restaurant tomorrow. Translation, good luck with that, buddy. <sighs> a bruised ego and a one-way ticket out of Hell's Kitchen. Do got the full service HK experience. But viewers appreciated that even though he kept on making mistakes, at least he served one of the best risottos from the red team. It definitely had to have been a proud moment for him. But this next contestant had nothing to be proud of since she sunk her whole team with her own brand of rule breaking. I'm talking about Elizabeth Bianchi from season nine, who made a really dirty move with her horrible mistake in episode six, if you can even call it a mistake. It all started going up in flames when Elizabeth was picked as the red team's rep for the 20 year reunion planning challenge. And this was their theme. 
We were thinking maybe we could recreate something Hawaiian with a luau. That would be fun. Things immediately went south when she decided that, because she'd never cooked Hawaiian food before, she could just wing it with some Asian flavors, considering there's not much of a difference. Now, I'm sure all of you from Hawaii are cringing super hard right now. I know you've all got some cultural mingling with Japan going on, but it's painful even for me to see her conveniently ignore almost 2,000 years of Polynesian history. And I'm not even Hawaiian. But wait, it somehow gets worse. She embarrassed herself even further by suggesting a surf and turf ditch to the committee, who were left utterly stunned. How do you guys feel about combining meat and seafood on the same plate, like a surf and turf? Now, put a pin in that one, since it's coming back later. But it got even worse when she decided to mislead her own teammates. Okay, so they definitely said they wanted Asian, so I would definitely want to do appetizer. Bacon wrapped like scallops is really nice. And she even suggested bacon wrapped scallops, much to Jamie's dismay. I don't know where the lentils came from, they're not Asian. I was confused as to if she really did have the right details or not. And the other shoe dropped when Ramsey announced that the theme for their dishes was Hawaiian. Much to the red team's surprise. The theme is Hawaiian. What the? I mean, seriously, the challenge was about showcasing a specific cuisine. And Elizabeth decided to torpedo her entire team's chances of winning. And the red team's reaction said it all. Elise was freaking out, and Jamie was downright petrified. But the show must go on. The appetizer round kicked off with Natalie and Carrie presenting their dishes. Carrie presented her ahi tuna tartare with avocado mousse and chilies. While the tuna tasted great, the overpowering guacamole and this little detail soured the experience. For me, the fish and the guacamole, mm -hmm. I like them each separately. I don't know about together, but maybe a little whatever. Next, Krupa's dish was up. And remember, she and the rest of the red team were flying blind. Still, she went ahead and presented a nut-crusted pork loin with lentils and blanched bok choy. Sure, her dish was praised for being delicious, but again, the challenge. Ramsey finally acknowledged the elephant in the room. Yeah, I think of a why, I don't think of lentils. Meanwhile, Elise served that scallop and bacon dish I mentioned earlier. And oh, did I mention that one of the committee members was pescatarian? Well, neither did Elizabeth, and Ramsey tore into her for it. And this is what Elizabeth had to say in her defense. I, okay, I'm sorry, I was under the impression that like we, we could mix them, I'm sorry. I honestly love how they flashed back to Elizabeth hearing how meat and fish served together were a big no-no for that night. Gotta love how they showed us the receipts immediately after she lied to everybody's faces. Anyway, Elizabeth had the decency to not even present her dish. But thanks to her lackluster leadership, the red team got schooled, losing the challenge 0-3. I mean, the blue team totally deserved that win, hands down. Elizabeth was like trying to put a square peg in a round hole at her team's expense. While the blue team, at least, you know, tried. And oh, the fallout didn't end there. The punishment was a real doozy. They had to deck out the dining room for the reunion dinner service, clean up both kitchens, and even decorate the cake. And let me tell you, Elise was so pissed. She straight up got in Elizabeth's face about it. And they said they wanted pork, pork, we want pork, so I said go with bacon. Elizabeth tried to defend herself, falling back on her feigned ignorance, but Elise wasn't buying it. Elizabeth just kept arguing back, saying none of her teammates stepped up against the blue team. And just to add fuel to the fire, she threw shade at Elise for good measure. Your scallops were undercooked, Elise. Of course, Elise didn't take that lightly. She hit back, calling her a pretty choice word that I won't repeat here. Safe to say, the red team wasn't having a great day. Later, when the blue team returned from their reward, Elizabeth tried to make amends by creating 19 Hawaiian lays, but it was too little too late in my opinion. Now, individual chefs breaking rules is pretty common. But have you ever seen an entire team breaking the rules together? Well, the young guns were about to find out exactly how well that'd go over. As for the challenge, the chefs were sporting jackets adorned with recipes, but not in plain English. 
dish. These were recipes spelled out entirely with emojis. I mean, seriously, who comes up with this stuff? But hey, it's Ramsay's Kitchen, so I'm just gonna gloss over the cringe factor here. In short, they had 45 minutes to decipher these hieroglyphics and whip up some masterpieces. And let me tell you, their success relied entirely on how well they could shout out instructions to each other. Knowing how well Hell's Kitchen contestants communicate on the best of days, you can imagine the shit show that was brewing. Now, let's talk about Trenton. Poor guy got the fish and chips jacket, and initially, it seemed like everything was smooth sailing. But then, Trenton went a bit rogue deciding that the recipe was more of a guideline than a rule. Capers and mayonnaise in tartar sauce? I mean, that's how things are usually done, but it's not how Ramsay makes his. And then the judging began. Ramsay inspected each dish as if they were his own children, which they kinda were. First up, the fish and chips round, Ramsay's personal favorite. Kaya and Trenton stepped up, but oh, Trenton said he wanted to make things pop. Cue Ramsay's wrath. It's not on there, chef. Yeah, read it out. No, it's not, it's not on the show. No, come on, there must be a little mayonnaise sign no, somewhere. No. Trenton had just dug himself into a deep, deep hole. But in the end, to absolutely nobody's surprise, Kaya's by-the-book approach triumphed, and the red team took the lead 1-0. to zero. And then there was Steve for round two, presenting spaghetti and meatballs, who forgot a crucial step. You didn't toss the pasta in any of the sauce? No, chef. Uh, just turn around, please, Steve. Let's send you back. We're going to watch this at the end. How did he miss finishing the pasta in the sauce? But it wasn't his fault, oh no. He quickly pinned the blame on his teammates for that slip up. Classic move, right? But hold on, because the chaos doesn't stop there. Bryn, bless her adventurous heart, decided to get fancy with her crab cakes and make an addition of her own. These instructions were religious. You had to literally follow step by step. And now I get it, we all want to stand out, but when the goal is to follow Ramsey's recipes to a T, you're definitely going to stand out all right, but not in the way you'd want. But the culinary mutiny just kept going. Peyton struck again. This time, he threw mushrooms into the mix. No. Ah, uh, sorry, man. Gotta listen to everybody. And now it was Megan's turn. She poured sherry vinegar into her eggplant parmesan. Sherry vinegar, sticking a Spanish ingredient into an Italian classic. You love to see it. I honestly don't know what got into the contestants that day. Was there something in the water, or was everybody just leaping at a chance to try and one-up Ramsay of all people? Emojis, man. Not even once. Up next, Ramsay was so done with this next contestant that he had to lay down the law in the most specific terms he could. Oh, Monterey's disastrous run in Hell's Kitchen during the 20-year reunion dinner service was like watching a train wreck in slow motion. From the very start, he seemed promising, handling the appetizer station with Natalie at a pretty respectable pace. But when it came to the main courses, it was a different story entirely. First, there was the broccolini incident. You just put broccolini in the cold pack. It's gonna get all greasy all. He managed to turn a simple vegetable into a greasy, mushy disaster, immediately bringing Ramsay's wrath down upon him. Rule number one. Vegetables in a cold pan with cold oil turns them into what? Mush chef. And just when you thought it couldn't get worse, he did this. And now he's just putting the trash. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my God, you kidding me. But wait, I'm not even close to being done. When Paul faltered on the fish station, Ramsey brought in Monterey and Jonathan to try and save the day. Operative word, try. However, Monterey's snapper came out raw, and to add insult to injury, he walked away when Ramsey wanted the team to face their mistake so they could, you know, learn and grow. Touch it. Don't you dare walk. I've had, I've had enough. Sorry, I am so pissed off. Like, where's your respect, dude? That was the final straw for Ramsey, who promptly kicked the blue team out of the kitchen. In the elimination round, Jonathan rightfully called out Monterey for his, well, everything. Monterey tried to defend himself, pointing out Jonathan's own particular brand of incompetence, but it was too little too late. He was nominated alongside Paul and ultimately got the boot. Ramsey's comments said it all. It was high school reunion night in Hell's Kitchen. Unfortunately for Monterey, 
he flunked the test. Ouch. Couldn't have said it better myself, but ouch. His exit might have earned him a standing ovation from the blue team, but in the end, he proved that standing in the corner and avoiding responsibility wasn't exactly a foolproof strategy to win on Hell's Kitchen, as if I needed to point that out. And oh, let me tell you about Scott Lee's bold move in season 18's Cook for Your Life challenge. So there they were, surrounded by the freshest produce imaginable from the farmer's market. Practically a chef's dream come true. And what did Scott Lee do? I'm just gonna be cooking with my own lentils. Nice. You don't see people cook lentils when it comes to a fresh ahi tuna fish. He decided to sneak on over to the pantry and grab some red lentils for his ahi tuna. Red lentils. In a challenge all about fresh, vibrant ingredients, he chooses dried lentils. I mean, seriously, why? Ramsey was wise to Scotley's little escapade, though, and oh boy, did he let him have it. Look at the freshness here. Look at those vegetables over there. That's right. And you give me dry lentils. But here's where things get even more confusing. Scott Lee broke the rules in this challenge and was somehow allowed to stick around, while others have been sent packing for far less. Honestly, I'm dying to hear your theories on how he managed to escape the chopping block, because I'm just completely lost here. While you think about that, I'm gonna talk about the most interesting episode where rules got broken. And it's all about Queen Elise herself. Like, the amount of audacity she had in order to throw a ton of ridiculous accusations at Tommy during dinner service is absolutely insane. The problem with Elise is, Elise never admits that she's wrong. She always blames someone else. Tommy was just minding his own business, working his station and doing his best, but Elise woke up and chose violence that day. It all started during prep when Tommy told Elise that she would have to score her own Wellingtons. Elise. Yes? I'm unwrapping your Wellingtons for you. No problem. But uh, I'm not scoring them though. Cool. And, well, she did. But that doesn't mean she liked it. I don't know why he did this like this. That's so stupid. But oh no, that wasn't dramatic enough for Elise. Fast forward to dinner service. Elise brought her Wellingtons to the pass, but sadly, Ramsey wasn't anywhere near happy with them. Who chewed that? That's what you presented me. That's what you presented me. I'm sorry. Go for and it was only a matter of time before Ramsey finally found out why they were falling apart. When you score pastry that deep with a sharp knife, it falls apart. But the queen of drama tried to blame Tommy. Chef, I did not score the first tray. So who scored them then? Tommy did. Now you're blaming Tommy. I mean, come on. Seeing a bold-faced lie getting thrown out so casually like that made my blood boil. But thankfully, what happened next was so satisfying. Go over there and f***ing tell him then. I want to see what you say to him. Come here, you. But that didn't stop her from marching over and confronting Tommy about it. Did you or did you not score the first tray of Wellington? Thankfully, though, Tommy wasn't about to be scapegoated without a fight. I did not Tommy score them. Right over there in front of you before you scored the face of them. No, I did not score okay. them, and I'm not lying. Oh my god, finally. Thank you, Tommy. Ramsey was completely done with Elise at this point. And what's more, like with Elizabeth earlier in the video, the editors had Tommy's back and made sure we saw the receipts. I'm unwrapping your wild things for you. No problem. But uh, I'm not scoring them, though. Cool. A common HK Editor W, if I've ever seen one. And the best part was his team came to his defense, too. Yo, that's some booty act. Man, that girl coming over fucking trying to blame us because she can't cut Wellingtons. Although Ramsey probably wanted to stick his head into the freezer like our boy Raj in order to get away from the drama, he stayed put, if only to remind her of something. Who are you gonna blame? Carrie, Krupa, Jamie? In the end, both teams were named joint losers, and Tommy was furious that Elise tried to drag him down to her level. I mean, can you blame him? But the whole thing honestly sums up Elise perfectly. It's a testament to her character, or, well, lack thereof. In a competition where trust and teamwork are crucial, her actions weren't just deceitful, but also downright disrespectful to the spirit of the game. I think Tommy deserved better. 
Not just here, but in the rest of the season as well. Dude had top four potential, and it was a shame that he fell right before the finish line. Let me know what you think about him in the comments down below. Also, go ahead and let me know if you think I missed your favorite rule-breaking moment, cause I know I definitely haven't even begun to cover them all yet. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, if you thought this video was crazy, then make sure to check out my next post right here. It's even better!